Hi, welcome to the Autist Guild Web Services webinar. My name is Tyg, I work in web services. Today we're going to be going through um, a discussion of the Site Builder website and uh, specifically how to build your own website or have it plus build it for you. Um, so we use a, a purpose built uh, software called uh, Site Builder. And uh, some of you many some of you may be familiar with it. Um, it's uh, very easy to use, and uh, we're gonna go uh, run through that today. Um, so uh, if you log on to autistguild.net, you'll see that uh, there are two ways of um, having your website built. We can build it for you. You can uh, run a test drive, and uh, the test drive basically just allows you to build your own website. It's very straightforward, it's very intuitive, and it's kind of, if you're a new member, um, you know, just kind of experimenting yourself with um, with all of the features. And the Build My website is, if you're not as sure, and you'd like one of the uh, web services team members to uh, build it for you. And basically it's a, it's a simple form you fill out, and um, you send it to us, and we build your website, and send it back to you a week later, and review it for you. So, um, yeah, all right, so I'm gonna go over the two ways we can do it now. So there's the, there's the, there's the test drive, which is um, in the top right-hand corner of the website. You uh, fill it out, you choose a username and a password, and which tier you'd like to, um, you'd like to use, and uh, I'll go over the tiers now in a minute. There's uh, small differences between them, and um, that begins the site building process. And the second way is to build my site. That's um, that's where you fill in the forms, and, you, know, you fill in your personal information, what username you like, you know, your biography, um, information on the works. If you want to upload it, author photographs, pictures of your books, um, what do you like a contact page or event page? Basically, just all that stuff. Um, and then we have another uh, service we offer, which is we'll, if you're a member with us, we'll register domain names for you. And uh, basically that's if you want your, if you want your own website, we'll um, ensure that that name is registered for you. Or we will also, uh, if you're not registered with us, we can transfer your domain names. Or if you don't have a website with us, have it with a different provider we will transfer your domain over to our server and host it. Um, there's small fees with each of these, there's, although the domain name fee is waived if you're a new, new member of us. And um, you can find us on the main page of the Authors Guild, uh, just forward slash domain names dot php. And um, though if you're building a website with us, there's actually um, a space in the form where you can say which domain you would like to have registered, and we'll do that for you. You won't have to go onto this page. And um, yeah, so the costs involved are, there's a $150 site building fee, and there's a one-time only fee. And uh, this fee is waived if you're a new member. You've got eight weeks to submit your application. And um, there's an $18 annual domain fee, which is also waived if you're a new member. And um, if you build your own website, the, you also only have to pay a $75 activation fee. Again, this, all of these fees are waived if you're new members. Um, and then what I'd mentioned earlier, the tiers. So there's three different tiers we offer. Tier one is basically just a one page website. So that's like your home page that has everything on it. And um, some writers, some authors find that that page works for them. For most people though, they opt for tier two, which um, you can have up to like eight pages basically, eight main pages, which, which I'm gonna go over now in a couple of minutes. And um, it's just a much more traditional website and about 80% of our members opt for tier two. And those who go for tier three, they basically just want more you can add more works to your works page. So you can list more books. Um, you can you have more file space. You can upload more files to your um, to your website. And um, if you register an email address to our service, then you can also have more email address email addresses for that. But, uh, the costs are pretty straightforward. As you can see, it's five dollar a month bill quarterly, 
which you own nine dollars a month bill quarterly for tier two and twelve for tier three. And um, also, this P, this um, PowerPoint will be available for download if anyone wants uh, it to reference afterwards. Just get in, get in contact with us and we'll send it out to you. So we're going to go and start the site building process now. I'm going to first show you a website I was working on earlier on today to show you what a website can actually, uh, what one of our websites will actually look like. And then we, I will build one and you guys can watch as I do it. So I'm just going to log in. Perfect. So this is what you'll see when you go onto the AuditorsGuild.net page. Um, it's a test drive. Right. So this is this is how you will build your own. I've already built mine, so I'm gonna log in. So here's a website that I built early on today, and this is, um, this is really the basics of um, what your website can look like. I'm going to go through some of some of the basic and some of the more advanced um, features of site builder today. So this is your standard home page, your bio page for most people. Then you've got a works page. Just going a little slowly. So there you go. So here's a traditional works page. So put your books listed. Each one of these is clickable. So these will take you into what's called your featured works page, which um, allows you to uh, Um, this uh, the featured works page will allow you to um, publish an excerpt, like a lengthy excerpt of your book, and uh, or is this as you can see, like just below the island project here. This is like more of a brief this brief description or like choice blurbs, perhaps from uh, reviewers. And uh, so you can have up to ten books here in tier two. You can have more than ten with a tier three. And unfortunately, the tier one doesn't offer this. You just get a, a home page with tier one. You can have an events page, which often kind of lists events that uh, your readings or store appearances or anything like that. Um, so I've just mentioned today's webinar. And um, yeah, we have a newsletter feature. This isn't as commonly used. This is a, if you want to send newsletters out to people who subscribe, it can just be news about any recent publications or again events. And um, I'll show you how to implement this into your website when I build one later on. And uh, basically people will just um, fill in their email address and click submit. And uh, it's kind of as straightforward as that really. And then I've just made an essays and reviews um, tab to kind of to link to articles that, uh, that I haven't written but I've just used for the purpose of uh, illustration and show you how to embed a YouTube video on your page, show you how to download PDFs of um, a lot of people, a lot of writers like to put up PDFs of uh, excerpts of books they're working on or like reviews or articles, even some photographs sometimes. And then we have a blog which is like one of our most u most utilized features. Um, it's a very easy to use blog feature, and it's also like just very popular. People can comment on it, and um, it's very easy to edit and uh, update. And yeah, people like our members are very very fond of uh, the blog feature. We had a discussion before discussion feature where people could post and kind of focus, kind of worked like a blog, but. Um, most of you will know that we've updated our um, we've updated the website and we've got a new site builder and unfortunately we haven't carried the discussion feature over because 
through too many uh, associated security risks. So um, we're just going for the blog with this one. And then we have a contact page, which is um, very self-explanatory. People can get in touch here. And um, usually this security feature after they write their message that they have to fill out before they press send. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it's a very bare bones website. But I'm gonna show you now how to make it. And um, yeah, so if you're at home, you can you can follow the steps and you can sort of build your own website if you if you like. Or if not, you can fill out the form and uh, we'll sh I'll show you the form actually before I build this. So, um, to log in. Um, I just see Evelyn's question there. I'm no, Evelyn, I'm working with tier two. All right. I haven't actually applied for membership with this account yet, so I can't do it that way. But um, I'm going to show you how to build your own. Now. So test drive. So. Tier two, tier two. You create the terms. You create your account. There you go. So this is what your website's going to look like when um, when you log on for the first time. Um, all right. So this is a very basic website. And uh, you'll see your toolbar up here. You've got preview, edit, publish, help, layout, theme. And then these are features for when you, you know, you've got it set up. Um, that's how you find out who visited your website. And, like, this is how you activate your website. After like we send your website back to you and you've reviewed it and you want to go public with it. Also, this should be noted that the build, the build my site, the test drive, test drive feature is completely free. You don't have to commit to paying the site builder fee, um, you only have to once you act, once you opt to activate, that's when you pay the fee. So this is a no risk kind of venture to build your own website, and you can learn a lot in the process. And then there's a change of password. There's to the upgrade to tier two or downgrade to tier one, and domain is to do with registering domains. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to edit your website. So the one I was just in was a three region. I.e., there's a middle and there's flanked on either side by two rows that you can put works or um, pictures in. It's a right sidebar, which means there's only like a sidebar appearing on your right, and there's a left sidebar. But by far the most popular and most practical of the three is the three regions. It just it maximizes um, use of space on your website. So we're going to go with that. There's a single region as well, which can show you what it looks like. 
it's not as popular or as kind of practical, but some people do use it and they can make it look really, really well. So I'll show you the themes. So before we change the new site builder, um, there are very few of our themes that are actually mobile friendly, but all of the themes you'll see in this one are entirely mobile friendly, meaning that if you're looking at it on a smartphone or an Android, um, it, like none of it will uh, appear modeled or you won't be missing anything, which was kind of and a common complaint about the old site building. So, so you can take a look at these themes and kind of see what we have to offer. Kind of a lot of different variety, and I think like if you're a different sort of variety, like different themes will appeal to you. But um, yeah, we're constantly adding themes as well. So if there's not one you're super keen on, like you can check back and like, constantly kind of working on them. Today I'm gonna go with the background. We'll go for a background like blue. One of our newer themes. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how you it. So you'll see when you first open it, you just have a home page, a works page, and a contact page. And um, so when you go to edit, the first thing you can do, you can go to edit menu. And you'll see that you actually have there are eight different tabs you can work with. Maybe seven. This loads. All right. That's what we have. Got a home, works, biography, events, newsletter, discussion, blog. And contact, and you'll notice that the boxes are ticked saying that like each of these are hidden. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and unhide all of these. And you can also rename any of these features. So for this, I'm going to rename the discussion. I'll just call it uh, articles and images because I'm going to upload articles and images. There you go. You save. Always save on this. Save your progress whenever you make any changes to it. Yeah, let's edit website title. So you can change the name of your website there. You can actually have a do this. You can have a subtitle below it. Call it the webinar. There you go. So you can see that that's an uh, italicized there. The home page layout. That's just the what we're in. And so the home page for most people is the bio. So I'm just gonna edit this piece of text as though we're a bio. Show you how to use our delete this. You can delete all of these uh, stock text boxes that appear in your website. They're just um, usually just prompts as to how to use each page. So we're going to add text. I'm going to paste in some text and just take it from a Word document. There you go. And basically, you'll see the toolbar at the top that if, any, if anyone out there uses Gmail, it's a very similar toolbar to, um, to the Gmail toolbar. It's bold, italics, underline, and then just align various alignments, bullet points, numbers. Um, this I'll be using later. This is for um, adding hyperlinks so that when you click a certain word, that word will take you to the link uh, that you want it to go to. And that's for adding it, and that's for removing it. This is for undoing what you just did. And then this is also something I'll be using later on. This is source code. This is if you want to embed YouTube videos onto your website, or uh, some members have PayPal buttons so that uh, people who visit their site can you know, 
directly buy books from them. Um, people used to use it for Facebook uh, like buttons and uh, Goodread, Goodreads buttons. But we've actually included um, footers, which are basically um, just things that sit, icons that sit at the bottom of your page on each page of your website. And you can, you can enter your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, and uh, the various icons will appear and they will link you to, uh, they will link uh, viewers on your website to your various social media page. But uh, I'll go over all of that. In our old version of, of, um, of Site Builder, people had to get their own uh, code off Facebook to like try and paste in their own HTML, HTML. so we've made it a little bit, a lot easier actually uh, in this version. But, um, so I'm just gonna show you how to like make text bold, make it uh, italicized, it's, it's very straightforward. There's the underlining features. And that's like if you wanna do a paragraph, or let's say a quote like this. That in the line center. Do. Let's save that. We can put a heading. preview then to see what it looks like. And that's kind of what it looks like there. All right, so we'll put up an author photograph here. So when you want to add anything to your website, you'll see these four little buttons. There's text, image, link, and file. On a works page, you'll see a button for work. Uh, a newsletter is a button for newsletter and there'll be a button for ad blog post and blog so like these are how you um add things to your site so over here i'm gonna go for an image upload an image all right so i'm gonna use it let's put the authors go logo now There you go. It's as simple as that. There is a little box here that basically allows you to put a caption below. So, some sort of auto photograph. There you go. And like there's a, you can't really change the image alignment for this uh, photo because it's just going to appear on the left hand side of your uh, screen. You can also, which I'm going to go over later on, you can have the image clickable so you can link it to somewhere else on the internet and um, this is useful if you want to put in an image that will like an image of your book that will link your book to its Amazon page um, and we can also have the image open in an overlay which is useful as well open image and overlay all right this will basically like so when you if your photograph small you can click it it will appear larger I'll show you Just like that. There you go. And then I'm going to go into works and add some works. So I'll just change the names of these. And basically, this is a description for the works page. This is the page you're on right now. Let me just show you. So you're going to have like you can have a lengthy kind of quote or synopsis of your book here on this page. Um, and then you also have a very brief one, which is just over here. I'll show you where that appears. So that's where the brief description goes there. 
and um, yeah, so this is your selected work works bar, and uh, that's always going to appear on your website unless you choose to hide it, which is like hide it by in this button here. So that kind of disappears off every page. To get that back, you just simply press Show Selected Works. Kind of as straightforward as that. And um, so let's let's add a work here. Call it Work Two. So here we go. Two. Um, description, um, put in some dummy text again. All right, there we go. And let's go, I'm gonna buy a link URL. This is, um, if you wanna sell your book or a link to where your book can be purchased, it's very useful. So um, let's say it's on, let's say it's on strandbooks.com and then Buy link text is purchase. It can be anything, but the most common is purchase the book here. And you can include an image. So let's find an image. Let's say uh, let's pick this New Yorker cartoon here. Or right, let's pick this book. And then let's create a category for it because it's um it's a category. Let's say it's fiction. So there we go. So we're we're picking fiction. Put a brief description here. There you go. Yeah, there's work too. Is the image gone? Is the image there underneath it? And there's your purchase a book here. Sometimes people are like not to put the image here, the image of the book cover here, and they simply can put it up here instead. So you can have the picture of the book here and a link. I can show you what that looks like. It can kind of sometimes look a bit neater, I find some people. But the thing about having it in the book thing, so when you go into, you click it, oh, it doesn't appear in there. So let's put in an image. Open link in a new window, so that means when they click the window, they won't leave your website, just in the window will pop up and that will take it. All right, so it must be into this form. There we go. Let's click in here. I'm just gonna click that box to open it in a new window. So the featured works page, which is what happens when you click the work, that's usually where people put um, like publish kind of lengthy kind of excerpts of their book or you know publish a chapter or whatever. And um, yeah, that's there's there's really no word limit to what you can publish in here. And uh, people really like that. And it works. So you can also publish, like, let's say, a link to your agents page here if, if you have one or whatever. The URL. Let's put it. Um, yeah, 
that's a link. So that one, someone clicks it. There you go. Bring this into the Autist Guild. And then let's move on to biography we won't use because that's the home page basically. Events. These are all like very straightforward. They they follow the exact same format of adding and edit, editing and uh, deleting as the works and homepage. Um, newsletter is a little bit more complicated, but not at all that complicated. So to configure it, you first press this button, configure newsletter. And um, so this is the from name you're gonna enter is your own name and, and the email that it's gonna appear in the receiver's sender or receiver's inbox from is your own email unless you want to set up an email specifically for this. And that's basically how you do it. And once you do that, I'll just put it from my own name. And there we go. So now it's open. So now when some, a visitor comes to your page, they can type in an email address and hit submit, and then they will get your newsletters, basically. And uh, to write a newsletter, it's going through here. And again, you can put whatever you want in the newsletter. There's no, it kind of functions like a blog post that everyone else is going to get. You can have images in it. And um, yeah, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. There's articles and images. So I'll use this, uh, use this page to show you what, how to upload articles and how to embed videos in your website. So we'll do it first by uploading a, uh, Articles. So then you can have the text below it. So there you go. So when that's clicked, then the document downloads. There you go. And uh, what else do we do? We're going to show you how to put in a video. So I can. So in order to embed a video, like I showed you earlier on, you need to go on to find your video. YouTube is by far the easiest place to do this because then they include the embed codes. If you're using a website that isn't YouTube, you have to do a bit more searching or maybe get in contact with the website to find it, but it's not impossible. It's just, it takes a little bit more effort. So to get the embed code, if you want to put a certain video, hit share, go to embed right over here. And you get the, the code, which is this little thing here, which is HTML code. And um, yeah, it's kind of tricky, but it, you do it once or twice and it makes, makes some sense. So we'll remove this here and put a new text in it. So we go to add text. And this button here, the source code, this is where you're putting the the source code for the YouTube video. You just copy and paste it in here. Okay, and we can include in the heading like video one. There you go. Save that, hit preview, and there's your video embedded into the website. It's kind of straightforward as that. 
again, it's kind of slightly more awkward to do it if the video isn't from YouTube, but it's still possible. Now let's go in and look at the blog. So you have to configure the blog first. No, it's configured already. All right. Let's add a, add a post. Today's that you can back publish as well. So you want to publish from yesterday, you just change the date and it will uh, automatically bump it up and put it down in your blog. So there's your body. You can put some text in. You can also change the image size from small to large. We're going to make this large. We have a read more feature, which is basically so that you can just show the first paragraph or so of your of your uh, blog and then we can put one of these guys in which is basically uh, this button here but it does you'll see the little lines so that they can't read any more of the blog post without clicking it which is kind of useful if you want to get people to you know just go in and see it we're going to change the status of this from draft to publish and the mod common status is moderator which means we get to approve all comments before they appear on the website you can change you can disable comments you can make them automatic so they automatically appear we have a bunch of things you do i'm also going to show you how to hyperlink in here so let's say let's use the last word 16th century let's say we want that to link somewhere we just go to this button here the insert edit link and the, we want it to link to you know authors guild authors guild.net there we go. And that's the word that people are going to have to click on. Just press OK. Do you want to add the required prefix? Yes. All right, so save. There's your first blog post. And um, there are kind of uh, tags here on the side. They usually, you can, you can arrange your own tags with the the way they'll automatically order it is by a uh, date. So uh, that's why there's just one right now. But uh, you can add tags by, one sec, maybe more. So there's your hyperlink. There you go, just taking us back to the web services. So I'll show you how to add tags now. These can be useful for people who will want to search your website or um, you know, when they search for you online these tags would be associated with your search engine optimization. And these are here, so. And then to make a new one, you just press enter. And then, there you go. So, you'll see those tags appear at the top of your, um, at the top of your blog post. There you go, and then they will all appear here. So you kind of have as much control as to how, how many tags you want visible or what tags. So um, yeah, that's the blog really. And then I'm gonna show you the contact page. Now. This is pretty straightforward to set up yourself. Um, you just hit edit above the email address and type in your own email address. and use CAPTCHA, which is kind of a security feature to cut down on spamming, basically there. It's like Builder Office. Save, and so when any, whenever anyone contacts this page now, I'm gonna receive uh, an email in my inbox. And that's kind of pretty much it. It's, it's very basic, but um, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. There's like many features that kind of take a bit of getting used to.
but it's also basic enough that like just a novice can also use it as well, which I think is why the site builder feature, the site builder app software works really well. But um, I pretty much went through everything now and I got some time to take a few questions. If anyone has them, I see there are a few questions here, so. I see Evelyn Molson's, um, and no, that was tier two. Um, uh, that was a tier two website I was working with. Um, tier three, I can go back to the slide as a reference point here. Tier three has, um, so you can have 10 works on uh, tier two, but you can have 50 on tier three. And um, basically, you can only put five files on your tier two website, whereas you can put 25 on tier three. And that's a big draw for people who want to put up a lot of, um, um, you know, files for download. But um, another question just came in. Hey, Patrick Henry. Uh, how do we just font style and size? So there's actually currently no, we you can, adjust the, you can adjust the style, but not the, well, not exactly. You can adjust the only way to adjust this font and style, um, font style and size right now is basically by changing the theme. Um, we used to offer code that you could put into your website to change the, the font and style. Um, but a lot of users, it's, it's very difficult basically to put in the code without doing some sort of inadvertently doing some damage to your website. So basically we remove the possibility for authors, members to put in code to manually adjust um, the size and style of the font. So unfortunately with the new version you can't, you just have to basically pick um, a theme um, that has a font that you would like. And um, we're working on ways to kind of build that into our toolbar, but because the site builder software is just so new, the newer version, we're, uh, we're just kind of working towards that at the minute, basically, but we're definitely working on it for the future because it's, it's what a lot of people want, so. Right, next question. Hope that answers your question as well, Patrick. All right, so, um, what, a, what is, what if you already have an Audience Go website, how to update it? So basically, we only started doing the website migrations um, two months ago now, and we've been sending the emails out in batches to members. So if you haven't gotten it yet, it's just we're selecting members at random, and emailing 10 or 20 at a time. And it's not exactly a slow process, but there aren't too many of us doing it in the office. That's why it's taken a while. But if any of you would like um, to be uh, migrated over, um, send us an email after this. Uh, registering your interest and we'll send you out all the details and we will put you on the list and uh, you can just be expedited basically and it's very straightforward and there's also the possibility of being re-migrated but in the long term we're hoping to have everyone over the new version just because it's, it's just a safer website basically so um, all right. um will there be sorry these questions are backing up be a copy of this presentation yeah we can send the if, if you like we can send the the powerpoint out to you and i'm not sure if this is being filmed and put on the website but i'd be happy to speak with you fran if there are any sort of issues you're having building your own website and there is a help button in the site builder software but um um as such there are no sort of regular online tutorials for website. We do send out a lot of information on how to build your website when we pass it over to you, but we realize they're probably, like to do more complicated things like we went over today, we don't provide much, but we're very happy to reach out, call people and explain stuff over the phone. And Erica Silverman. Um, yeah, the old one would automatically switch over. We just take care of that. As I mentioned, it doesn't take very long, so we can, um, so get in touch with it. Send an email to web services if you can, just saying that you'd like to be migrated over and I'll put you on the list this evening. Uh, you should be migrated over within the next week. 
the advice for those who have existing EG websites? What are your newest themes? Uh, Kathleen, um, are you, I'm not sure, Kathleen, if you're in the old version or the new version, but uh, the newest themes, I just kind of went through there in the, the webinar. But um, the themes definitely vary a little bit between the old version and the new version. Um, there are some people who prefer the themes in the old version, but um, we're kind of in the process of building more teams for the new ones. So um, I think everyone will be kind of pleased with the newer themes you're gonna have. And what's kind of more important is that they're all mobile friendly because more and more people are looking at your website on their mobile phone or tablet. And our goal was to ensure that they could see it probably and that there was no latency issues. Um, yeah. All right, so how do you make the work short description jump to full workspace? Brian, I'm not entirely sure about the question, but if you want to email us in, I can answer that over email. That'd be a bit better. How can you track who's visiting your website? So you do that through uh, Hits and More, which is in the top toolbar of your website, and that kind of gives you some Google Analytics, basically. And if for some reason you can't find that or it doesn't appear to be working, send web service an email and we can give you some more uh, detailed, script, detailed uh, instructions on how to get them. Fran, how long is the trial? The, there's actually no, no like expiration on the trial, so you can, you can um, experiment in the test drive side for as long as you need to. And um, you wanna see the cost again. Perfect, well, we, can, we have your email account, so we can email you out the, the PowerPoint um, of, from today. But also that, that um, the cost, uh, Slide screen slide screenshot I had up there. That's actually on the website on authorsguild.net, but uh, I'd be happy to send it out to you after this. All right, you can put Facebook. Yeah, I never actually showed. Um, I never actually showed you guys how to do that, so I'll show you really quickly how to um, how to build or how to put in the footer. But I'll just take a second. Just, um, yeah, I have time. Just make sure they're seeing, ask them uh, if they're going to have to see and make sure everybody's still seeing your, um, oh, just okay. let me see your share. Sorry, guys, we're just making sure you can actually see what we're sharing, showing you. Yeah, I can. For that. Okay. So you have that PowerPoint yeah. up before. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll show you guys how to use the folder real quickly. It's basically at the bottom of every page. And you've just got options for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Goodreads, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. So let's do the Facebook one. So it's going to go HTTP. So we go to Facebook.com and show. The preview. And you scroll into the bottom, and you'll see there in the bottom right hand corner of the Facebook logo. And it's the exact same for Twitter and Instagram, and Goodreads, and LinkedIn. And uh, to someone's question there, um, you can put buttons elsewhere on the Cider page. We don't really provide too much assistance with that because you need to get the embed codes. It basically functions the exact same way as the YouTube video uh, did. You, if you want a PayPal button or a Goodreads button or um, a Google search button that some people have had on their website, you need to contact the website and get the embed codes off them. And once you have them, we can kind of help, but we can't get you, we can't help you with the embed codes, unfortunately. Um, your site will become defunct if you're no longer a member, basically. If you don't pay dues or you choose not to uh, renew uh, your membership. Um, Patrick, the newsletter is not available in tier one. It's just available in tier two and three. As I said, tier one is basically just one page and it doesn't have a blog or any of those kind of features. It's uh, very basic. Um, Evelyn, um, your website, even if it is 10 years old, we, we can migrate that into the new, uh, into the new, uh, Refresh site builder and um, if you just email us we'll send you the information and if you if you're still interested We can migrate your website over in the next week uh, 
Uh, Patrick, I see your issue with hits and more. We can answer that over email. Um, sometimes um, it doesn't quite sync up with Google Analytics, but uh, we can have someone contact you about that. Um, it's not, unfortunately, at the minute possible to add simple animation and moving images. GIFs can just be a bit tricky on the website. Um, it's something that more and more users are asking us about, so we're, we're looking into it. Um, I think we're pretty much out of time right now for questions, but um, there's still a few questions here. Um, we can respond to all of these questions by email after uh, the webinar is over. And anyone who didn't have a question but wants to know more about Site Builder or um, just the website building process in general, um, email web services at authorsguild.org and you, you'll be answered in the next couple of days. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And, uh, it's nice to meet you.